Hi, I'm Lauren Kunze, and I'm here today to talk about talking to machines, specifically the strange things that people say based on the 60 billion conversation logs processed by my company, Pandora Bots. Please raise your hand if you know what a chatbot is. Okay, okay, for, so, for the two of you who don't know, a chatbot is a, quote, artificially intelligent computer program designed to chat with humans in the programming language that we best understand, natural language. Chatbots can live on any messaging or voice channel, and chances are you encounter them regularly in some form or another, whether it's Siri or Alexa or a bot on live chat or Facebook Messenger providing marketing or customer service. 90% of our time on mobile is spent on messaging, and 3 billion people have a messaging app installed. And as of this past holiday season, over half of US households own a smart speaker. The chatbot market is exploding because bots represent an opportunity for brands and technology companies to have a personal, one-on-one, -on -one, two-way conversation with consumers. What's more, in the future, conversation will be the primary way we interact with computers. Now, my company, Pandora Bots, is the largest, most established chatbot development and hosting platform. We provide a free web service where anyone can build a bot for any application. And the chatbots created on our platform have had over 60 billion conversations with human end users. So we have a unique insight into how to craft conversational software based on the strange stuff that people say. Now, building a chatbot essentially boils down to two basic tasks. First, you have to guess what people are going to say to your chatbot. And then you have to write responses for your bot to say back. Now, hang on. Let's say we're a business with lots of historical data on the types of conversations that people have with our brand. Can't we just dump all of our live chats and emails and call center logs into a big data blender and push the machine learning button and out comes a perfectly conversational chatbot? Unfortunately, this big data blender isn't real. I made it up. It does not exist except perhaps maybe in the marketing brochures of shady startups. There's no question that artificial intelligence is going to touch every facet of our lives in the coming decades, disrupting jobs and entire industries. But AI is also one of the most overhyped terms in the zeitgeist and has been so wildly misappropriated by the media and tech moguls, startups, VCs, that the term has become almost meaningless. Usually today, when we talk about AI, what we're really talking about is machine learning, specifically a branch called deep learning, where neural nets are trained to learn by example from large data sets without being pre-programmed with specific rules. These techniques have led to major breakthroughs in historically hard AI problems, like image and speech recognition, but they have not worked for natural language understanding, and they are by no means silver bullets for every AI problem. Natural language understanding is still far from being solved. That's why Siri or that annoying customer service chatbot are still constantly apologizing. I'm sorry, I didn't understand you. Now, even if you do have a data set that is sufficiently labeled to train a machine learning model or help make an educated guess as to what people will say to your chatbot, you still need to script responses. Conversation designer is actually a hot new job category here in Silicon Valley, or what my out-of-work journalist friend calls job security for English majors. <laughs> now, wait a second. Why can't we just use an algorithm for natural language generation, which should let the computer formulate a theoretically sensible answer based on what it learns? The reason why we can't do this is your fault, people. <laughs> People, as it turns out, see terrible things on the internet. And when chatbots learn from people's inputs unchecked, they go off the rails very quickly, like poor Microsoft Tay here, which famously turned into a Hitler-loving sex robot within 24 hours of being fed on a diet of tweets. We're just lucky that she wasn't eating Reddit. This Tay situation honestly says more about human nature than about robots. Our biases creep into our data sets, and the bias software that's created is actually a reflection of our worst selves. So 
in order to avoid creating Hitler-loving sex robots, we're stuck writing rules or hand-authoring bot responses to be brand appropriate and anticipate everything anyone could possibly say to a chatbot, which feels like an impossible problem. However, while it's true that there are an infinite number of possible combinations of words, the frequency at which words appear in language actually obeys something called Zipf's Law, which observed that the most frequent word appears twice as often as the second most frequent, and so on. What we realized when we analyzed our data is the same distribution curve holds true, not just for words, but for phrases and sentences. In fact, 95% of first input to all chatbots are covered by just 1,800 words, and the average branching factor decreases with each successive word. In other words, people are boring. <laughs> We walk around saying the same thing most of the time. Specifically these things, which are the top 50 inputs across all English-speaking chatbots on our platform, universal regardless of the use case. And they made me bleep some of them out, as you can see. <laughs> um, in fact, because we know the top 10,000 things that people are likely to say in general conversation, we've open source chit-chat libraries so developers don't need to reinvent the wheel. 10,000 is also the magic number of responses or rules required on average to cover a specific domain, which boils down to about 160 hours of human labor or a month of work prior to launch. Now, if you remember one thing about chatbot development from today, remember this. Most of the work happens after you launch. Chatbots are dynamic content that require constant care and feeding. Launch quickly and iterate rapidly. Because once we do launch, we're no longer guessing what people are going to say. We have real data to work with. Our challenge now is how do we make sense of this data? Let's take a quick look at a real customer example. Yamato Transport, the FedEx of Japan. Their package tracking bot on Line Messenger is saving them millions monthly and doing about 100 million interactions with customers daily. 100 million messages a day is about 60 gigabytes of log data. Simply not possible for a human bot developer to review. Now this is a case where machine learning can actually be effective. We've trained custom models to flag bad answers based on a variety of factors. And these bad answers are then surfaced to human supervisors who update the bot and associated test cases. And despite the high degree of automation achieved, it still takes around three human resources working two days a week to make bot improvements. The headline here isn't automation, it's augmentation. Now, going back to these strange things that people say to chatbots, here's a philosophical, or at least a design question for you. Should my package tracking bot be able to respond to I love you? or how are you, or how old are you, which according to the data, people are all but guaranteed to say. Bot designers often ask me, how do I force a user who goes off topic back on topic? I don't want to talk about your love life, I just want to tell you where your package is. This is actually a trick question. A bot that forces a user down a specific path is not a bot at all. It's a decision tree, like that annoying IVR system saying, push one for customer service and two for sales and three if this entire interaction makes you want to scream in a human. Bots are built to serve humans and not the other way around. The whole point of building software that can speak our language is to provide a universal and intuitive user interface. Every human input to your bot is a piece of customer feedback on how people want to interact with your brand. And the customer is always right. So you can elect not to author a bot response for, say, a marriage proposal, but that doesn't mean that your bot isn't going to get one. Or in the case of Amazon Alexa in 2018, one million marriage proposals. Now, our website features a chatbot that states very clearly it can help you create an account, schedule a call with sales, or otherwise realize your lifelong bot building dreams. But this individual doesn't care. They just want to talk about their girlfriend. 
Amazingly, this behavior is not the exception, it's the rule. Now, we deal with this by having two networked bots, a sales bot and a chit chat bot, who pass context back and forth, plus a parameter that we can set dictating how long we allow someone to wander off topic before we gently remind them, hey, we were talking about your bot dreams and not your girlfriend, bro. <laughs> Paradoxically, the more conversationally capable you make your bot, the more people will attempt to chat with it about anything under the sun. Take Mitsuku, our multi-Turing test award-winning chatbot, widely considered best in class at conversational AI. Of the million or so inputs she fields weekly, about 20 are trying to ascertain if she is a bot or not, even though she clearly discloses that she is. 13% of users say, I love you. And the majority are just there to chat, but a staggering 30% of all inputs are abusive or romantic overtures. And I promise you guys, this one asking to lick her little robe on hand is about as G-rated as it gets. People trying to have sex with chatbots, again, regardless of the vertical, is a statistically significant and inexplicable phenomenon. I've heard all sorts of theories, including an evolutionary biology argument that says we evaluate all seemingly sentient systems from the perspective of whether or not we can mate with them. Regardless, we do have a tendency to anthropomorphize technology, and it makes sense that we would treat as human something that speaks our language. Language, after all, is the fundamental defining feature of human intelligence at least according to Aristotle and Alan Turing, who famously picked language as the metric for machine intelligence in his eponymous test. And I do believe that when we create computers capable of carrying on a conversation, we will have achieved true artificial general intelligence. But what then? What is conversational's AI, conversational AI's ultimate application? What is the data, over 60 billion chat logs, saying we want from machines? Alice is an open source chatbot created on the PandoraBots platform that notably inspired the Spike Jones movie, Her. I was having lunch with this artist the other day, and we were discussing the social good applications for AI, from healthcare to education. Then he leans across the table and he looks me dead in the eyes and he says, Lauren, the real problem to solve here is loneliness. And that stayed with me, because when I look at the data, whether it's bots for marketing or customer service, I see the same trend. We are lonely and we crave connection. Conversation, communication is about connection. And the applications of this technology should realize more than just call center cost reduction. They should address the fundamental pain points of the human condition, because we are human, and that is the whole point of building human-like machines. Thank you.